I am returning to the Philippines because my country is now in crisis. I'm, I have my, my bulletproof vest, uh, hoping that that would be some kind of a protection. But if they hit me in the head, that's, there's nothing we can do there. In a matter of uh, three, four minutes, it could be all over, you know. And <laughs> I may not be able to talk to you again after this. So this is the danger. Is coming. I warned him not to come back when I saw him in New York three months ago. He wants to grab power. Hi, Mr. Yes. Telephone call for you. Uh, New York. Wait here. Hello. Tony? You gotta stop in Honduras on the way home. The United States is holding military maneuvers there to shake up the Sandinistas. Alex, Marcos and his wife and their goon squads, they have a stranglehold here. All with American support, especially Reagan. Now, Aquino is about to land, and maybe he's gonna say enough is enough. For God's sake, Alex, this guy could start a revolution. Tony. Cover Aquino's arrival, then get back here. Just don't forget to stop in Honduras. Uh, Alex, Alex. God damn. Come on, let's go. We're going to the airport. I can't find a thing about the noise returning here. <laughs> Get used to it, man. years in a Marcos prison, and three years of exile in Boston, and Senator Ninoy Aquino is leaving his family behind to return home, return home to Manila. Okay, Rolly, let's go.
Marcos prison. In three years of exile in Boston, Senator Ninoy Aquino is leaving his family behind to return home to Manila. It is a risk. He is still technically under arrest. He has no valid passport. But there are a lot of Filipinos who see him as the only hope in a country wracked with political and economic strife. This is Tony O'Neill reporting from Manila. I think the, the very fuck alone that we can land is victory enough. Everything after that's bonus. I mean, whether they put me back in a plane and ship me out or bring me to prison, I have promised to return. I have returned against all odds. So that's good enough for me. Hello? This is Kyoto News Agency. Is this Mrs. Akino? Yes. We have heard that your husband has been killed. Can you confirm this? I've heard nothing. What time is it? It's 2.15 in the morning. They're in Boston, Mrs. Akino. Again. No, it's crazy. It doesn't make sense. How does Marcos think he's going to get away with this shit? According to eyewitness reports, a man in his 20s with blue denims 
rushed around to the front of the plane. He shot Takino once in the back of the head from behind. Security men immediately opened fire on the assailant with automatic rifles and killed him. Mr. President, who was the assailant? We have not been able to identify him. We are issuing photographs in order for the public to help us. Mr. President, there were over a thousand security men at the airport. How could a single assassin penetrate the tightest security that's ever been deployed? The protection of a public figure against a determined killer who is prepared to die in the attempt at assassination will always be one of the most difficult, if not impossible, tasks of security men in the world. Mr. President, if I may, what was the motive of the assassin? We have no idea. Probably a plain communist rabout. Why the communist, Mr. President? To create chaos and then take advantage of the situation. We were aware of these plots. As you know, we asked Senator Aquino to delay his return. I would caution all of you not to make dangerous assumptions. We will unravel this tragedy, I assure you that. And here at the State Department, officials sought to absolve President Marcos of responsibility for the assassination. Spokesman Alan Romberg took the unusual step of citing diplomatic dispatches from the American Embassy in Manila to try to disprove a reported link between the Marcos regime and the killing. Embassy reporting indicates that the report alleging that Mr. Aquino was killed by shots from uh, several security personnel using rifles is erroneous. Alex, how in the hell does the State Department know Marcos had nothing to do with this? You know Reagan's not going to be here. You can bet on that. Why don't you ask your boy hey, Mike Hazeltine at the American Embassy? I'm sure he'll give you the real story. Perfect, Alex. Listen, uh, Aquino's wife and children are returning home tomorrow to go to the funeral. I'm going to cover the story. Okay. All right, listen, cover the funeral and then get back here. Remember, Manila is not the center of the universe. Yeah, neither is New York. That stretches for miles, my love. They know you did this for them. And they will not forget. And neither will I. <laughs> we will not rest until the men who ordered your father's murder have paid for the crime. <laughs> Manila has stopped today. Hundreds of thousands of Filipinos are marching in tribute to former Senator Benigno Ninoy Aquino. His brutal unsolved murder while in military custody 10 days ago has awakened the biggest wave of political protest in Philippine history. Directed at one man, Ferdinand E. Marcos. United York, States please. Senator Mark Hatfield. Mom? This hey, is Tony O'Neill hey, hey, reporting hey. from Manila. I want to see everything we have on tape regarding U.S. support to Marcos. How far back? Since Reagan took office. 1980. Tony, I've got Alex. 
Wish me luck. Alex. Yeah, Tony. I want to do a piece on Marcos and Imelda. They have stepped over the line. It's the beginning of the end. Tony, I had to push you on the plane to Manila. Now you're telling me you want to stay. What gives? Well, the turnout for Ninoy's funeral was bigger than Gandhi's. They've gone too far this time. Uh, Tony. Alex, just give me a couple of months. That's all I need. It's going to be the biggest story in Southeast Asia. Well, you better be right, buddy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alex. <laughs> Shit, I'm late. Even worse, that wrong. Here it is, Tony. Ah, yes. Thank you very much. Ramon, everything since 1980. I like it to you. Yeah, sure, you know, you can talk this thing to death, but we'll never find out what really happened, you know? It suits you. It's great. I have to go to the palace tonight. Inexasaya nila ang pagkamatay ni Ninoy. Vermilio. Excuse me, I was saying you're going to the palace on the night of Ninoy's funeral? Yeah, it's my job. I gotta cover a story. I'm sorry. My brother is the family radical. Well, you should be too. Our father stood up to Marcos and he died in prison for it. I defend human rights. <laughs> a lot of good that will do. Your legal protection is a joke. Everyone who's considered a threat to security can be picked up off the streets and never be seen again. Why don't you ever march with us? Because I'm not a Marxist, and I don't believe in violence. Well, I'm not either. Only Americans are stupid enough to think that everyone on the left is a Marxist. Hermilio! I'm sorry, Uncle. Well, don't say sorry to me. Apologize to our guest. I'm sorry. That's okay. Not all Americans support Reagan. Tony O'Neill, World Broadcasting. Nice to see you. Thursday. Mr. Hatfield. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. O'Neill. Mr. Marcos. Where is your beautiful young friend this evening? She has a headache. Quite a few of our guests had their days tonight. These are anxious times, Mrs. Marcos. Good evening. Good evening. I hate what you do with your hair. Michael Hazeltine, U.S. Embassy. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening. I am very disappointed. The American ambassador cannot be with us tonight. He sends his sincere apologies, sir. Senator? Good evening, Mike. Mrs. Hatfield. Good evening. Mrs. Marcos. Good evening, Mr. Hesselton. You look as lovely as ever. <laughs> Thank you. This is my daughter, Amy. I like your new hairdo. Thank you. Good evening. Real sensitivity, huh? What do you mean? You know his funeral was today. They're throwing the biggest party of the year. Marcos didn't do it. He's not that stupid. Why, come on. It was some communist guy. What's his name? An undercover NPA. I know the whole story. Okay? Raleigh Galvin. Small-time thug by day. Commander Bert Ramos, communist guerrilla fighter by night. Who came up with that bullshit? You guys or Marcos? It's not bullshit, Tony. My mother would have trouble believing the official story. Gallman, who never had a political thought in his life, wants to top a Kino, goes past a thousand crack guards, leaps 15 feet in the air and shoots a Kino in the back of the head before he gets off the steps. There is nothing that links the Marcoses to the killing. They'd never be charged, even if there was. He's got the legal system in his pocket, just like everything else. Come on, will you, Tony? You know what I think? What? As far as you guys are concerned, Marcos can do whatever he likes, as long as we keep the U.S. bases Clark and Subic. I wouldn't put it past you to waste a keynote yourselves. <sighs> okay, whatever you say, we set the whole thing up. I'm sure you did. I paid Goldman personally. 10,000 pesos and six pairs of embroidered shorts. You better watch what you say. You might read in the paper. This is Prospero Olivas, Metrocom chief. Juan Ponce Enrile, my minister of defense. The vice chief of staff, General Ramos. 
the chief of staff of the armed forces of the Philippines, General Baird. Senator. We embrace you, we salute you, we thank you for coming here and helping us during those dark days of World War II. All these fellows fought with us. Love is the most potent force in the world, more powerful than the nuclear bomb. And love can only be expressed in one way, feelings. Feelings, nothing more than feelings, trying to forget my feelings of love, teardrops. The way I look at it, rolling down the only one who benefited from this Aquino killing at the community, to forget my they have made us look as if we are engaged in killing our political opponents. We have bent backwards in helping political opposition grow and allowed them to win elections that we could have won easily with a little more push. We have written an election code that gave them more rights than they ever expected. But now, the communists have made us look bad because of this assassination. I'm concerned I need you. Magpakailan pama forevermore, my darling. Mahal, mahal kita. Pero kapag niloko mo ako, mapupukin kita. That sounds beautiful. You don't even know what I was saying. Say whatever you like. You know what I said? What? I said that I love you very, very much. But if ever you cheat on me, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. seem to bother Washington. Since President Reagan took office, the Marcoses haven't had to worry about American support. We love your adherence to democratic principles and to the democratic processes. In World War II, 
Filipinos and Americans fought and died together. And you yourself, Mr. President, played an unforgettably heroic part in that conflict. An increasing number of Americans are asking themselves why. Here is a large part of the reason. Clark Air Base and Subic Bay Naval Bases. Massive, strategically vital links in America's Pacific Defense Command. America has a lease with the Philippine government until 1992, and defense planners say the bases are crucial. This is Imelda Marcos's film center, modeled on the Parthenon. It's the latest of her building projects designed to impress tourists from America and around the world. Last year, when crews pushed around the clock to rush completion in time for the First Lady's International Film Festival, tragedy struck. An entire floor collapsed, trapping the workers below. The cement had not had time to dry properly. The Marcos Control media said 28 died, but people here believe 168 workers were buried alive in quick drying concrete. But Mrs. Marcos would not allow work to stop to remove the bodies, which were simply covered over with a fresh layer of cement. Now many Filipinos say the place is haunted. The building opened on time and Hollywood stars flocked to the gala. It was reminiscent of the lavish opening of an earlier pet project of Mrs. Marcos, the Philippine Cultural Center, when then Governor Ronald Reagan and his wife Nancy were on hand. The friendship between the two presidents and their respective first ladies goes back at least that far. The tourists don't come to the place they call Smoky Mountain, a fetid steaming mass of garbage where 10,000 Filipinos have built a city. Amid this world of stench, they make a living by scavenging through the refuse of Manila. It is a place Amelda Marcos doesn't want the tourists to see. Despite the fact it has existed in the heart of Manila as long as many of Mrs. Marcos's other building projects. Filipinos arrive here from the provinces. They live here, they have children here, and every day they die here. This is Tony O'Neill reporting from Manila. We took that off the satellite. I want to talk to him. I'd like to tie my tie. <laughs> let, let me tie my tie. This better be good. This better be good. Marcos? Mr. O'Neill, you have made me a, a little sad. I guess that explains my quick departure from home. I'm a fan of yours. Thank you. Even before you came here, I used to see you on American television and I say to myself, what a young and intelligent man. <laughs> now I'm angry at myself because I have not explained to you why I have built all those buildings. You don't think I care about the people in Smoky Mountain, do you? Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm sure you do. My report just asked, why don't you spend more money on them? Sit down. No. Here with me. Food is only one of the needs of the Filipino. There's something he needs even more than that. What is that? 
respect. Until Ferdinand and I, the world looked down on the Philippines and on the Filipino. We were a poor third world country. We are still a poor country, but the buildings I have made have been noticed all over the world. We now have the respect of great artists, movie stars, and international leaders. I have made Manila one of the great cities, and every Filipino feels proud. Tony, if there's anything that bothers you, about my policies. Please come to me. I will only be too happy to explain. Tony. Tony? You must be psychic. I was just going to phone you. Yeah? How are you doing? I'm fantastic. They raved about the outback shots I sent them, and I've written half the text already. It's going to be published in November. Well, that's great. You know, it's funny coming back to your own country. I saw it with totally new eyes. Would well, you meet a few old friends? Ah, uh, hundreds. Grant Robson's here. Uh, Grant, huh? What is he doing there? He's running a restaurant in Sydney. Can you believe it? Yeah. And speaking of Sydney, uh, I'm thinking about flying down there next Wednesday. No, no, no. I'm coming up. That's what I was going to call you about. New York's flipped over this Aquino stuff. And they want the next book to be based there. I just got the telex. Well, I was going to come up next week anyway. I mean, it's crazy. You're only six hours away and I haven't seen you for months. You know, they asked me if I had any objections. I said, you've got to be joking. My husband's in Manila. Isn't that terrific? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, when will you be here? Oh, sometime next week. I'll let you know. I do love you. I can hardly wait. Yeah, me too. I'll talk to you later. I know there are accusations and suspicions among some of you here that I am linked in some way to the Aquino killing. So I called you here to clear the air. I cannot understand these rumors. It was the president and I who pleaded with Ninoy not to come back again because of the dangers. It is not the president and the first lady you have put on trial. It is the whole population of the country the stigma is now over 52 million beautiful human beings who are being accused of being criminals. I've had it with politics. I am retiring. I would have made my move the other day, but the blind, the poor, the jeepney drivers, and the other beautiful poor people protested too much. My problem is my sensitivity and my Girl Scout mentality.
This is the Marcos way. People are angry, he shoots them. There were 19 students killed. The snipers were in that building. I'm going to march. With who? With the middle class in Makati. With the people who march there every Friday. You know the sort of mood Marcos is in? I'm going to do it, Joker. Until the murderers of these people and my husband are brought to justice. Good evening. The quicker you tell us who all your friends are, the quicker you'll get out of here. I don't know anybody. No! Stop. This is all very unnecessary. Please cooperate. Give me some names. I don't know anybody! Increase the voltage. Emilio is dead. Sally has been detained at Fort Bonifacio. God damn it! Do you know anyone who can help? Yeah. Mike Heseltine, please. Tony O'Neill. Mike Heseltine from Saigon. Is he here? Yeah, but it's not the same Mike we used to know. Yeah. Mike, a very good friend of mine, has just been picked up by intelligence agents. She's being held at Fort Bonifacio. What's your name? Sally Balamo. I'll do what I can do, Tony, but uh, these guys don't always listen to us. For Christ's sake, make them listen, okay? A niece of a friend of mine is being held in prison, and she's probably being tortured right now. Oh, Jesus. Does this happen a lot? All the time. Only weeks after the Mineola Bridge Massacre, Corey is out on the streets demanding the government take action for the murder of her husband. And the people defying the guns are joining her. And the people who are joining her aren't the radicals, they're the middle class. If Corey succeeds in mobilizing the middle class, then Marcos could be in trouble. This is Tony O'Neill reporting from Makati, downtown Manila.
Whereas the treacherous and vicious assassination of former Senator Nino Aquino has to all Filipinos become a national tragedy and national shame, especially because of the distortions and exaggerations in both foreign and local media. I, Ferdinand E. Marcos, hereby create an independent fact-finding board to be headed by Justice Corazon Juliano Agrava. Marcos and Ver are dragging me and the armed forces into the gutter with them. Marcos protects Ver at our expense. We must get rid of them both. garbage. General, 33 AFSICOM men were tested for nitrate traces on their hands to determine if they had fired guns. Sergeant Filomeno Miranda, who descended the stairs directly behind Aquino, was not tested. Isn't that true? Yes, it was an error that was discovered too late. General Ver, according to Senator Doy Laurel, Nino said that uh, Imelda Marcos asked him not to come home because, uh, quote, some of our boys will kill you to make us feel happy even though we won't ask them to, end of quote. Have you ever heard of a plot planned by the friends of the president and the first lady? No. I heard scuttlebutt about a plot to murder Aquino in such a way as to implicate the government. In that case, General, if the government was to be implicated, I presume you began to monitor Ninoy's movements and to make plans regarding his arrival. We did not monitor. Fool! I should not have allowed this to happen. When you are called, you must keep on stressing that you told Ninoy not to come home. I told him and he wouldn't listen. Use the letter. What letter? That groveling letter he wrote about you when we let him out of prison. Use it. ago? Thirty. Use it. It will work. My meetings with Ninoy were very cordial and happy. Ninoy was very close to us. I will read to you a letter he wrote a surgeon who treated him at the Philippine Heart Center. When the ultimate mist of controversy 
is melted by the rising sun. Her works for her people will find final recognition. so tense. Oh. Nothing. I'm just tired. <laughs> tired. Listen, darling. I don't know what you've been doing these last couple of months, but I've been like a nun. Am I doing something wrong? Ah, oh, no. No, you're not doing anything wrong. Not you, Angie. Who is it? Don't bullshit me, Tony. I'm too old for it. Oh. It doesn't matter who she is. It's the girl who was tortured, isn't it? I don't know, Angie. You just hit me. I don't know. This girl makes me feel so alive. And you never felt that way about me, right? Yes, of course. I mean, when we first got together, I felt that way. really done it this time. Selfish. You've always been so vicious. I'll send somebody for my things. Are you going back to New York? No, I'm staying here. I've got a job to do. <laughs> See this man who steps up there? Yeah. He's handing something. Probably a gun. To the guy in uniform. A gun. It doesn't prove anything by itself, but it is another piece in the jigsaw. Now, from the time Aquino steps out of sight, it is exactly nine seconds. Not long enough for him to get to the bottom of the stairs and onto the tarmac. And four more shots. The ones that killed Gallman. Oh, I remember the four right. shots. If Gallman was the assassin, why didn't they grab him? There were more than a dozen armed security men around the plane. And where could he have been hiding? So that none of them could see him. It's a joke. Well, what can you prove? We can prove that the military version is not true. We know they're lying. So Ver did it. So Ver ordered it. Has to be. And Marcos? He was probably so sick he didn't know what was going on. Or, possibly, it was his plan. Or he was seeing people three days before Aquino got back. But there is no doubt in my mind that Ver organized it. Do you have any hard evidence on who actually shot Aquino? Maybe tomorrow, a ground engineer sells to a lotterina was on the time. He saw everything. When he testified before the board, he said he had fainted and did not see anything. But he was scared to death. And now he has agreed to testify under oath in a secret private session. I heard the sound of running feet on the stairway. Ninoy was 
us at about the fourth step from the bottom of the stairway. And then a gun appeared <laughs> behind Nino's head <laughs> and fired. <laughs> I am ashamed. I understand. Did you see who fired? I could not see the gunman's body. My view was blocked by the post. But it was a military man. <clears throat> yes, sir was a military man behind Ninoy on the stairs. For Ferdinand Marcos, it was easily the worst reversal of his political career. General Fabian C. Fair, military chief of staff and top aide to the president, has had a direct hand in last year's assassination of former Senator Ninoy Aquino, according to the majority report the official Agrava board investigating panel. 25 others were implicated in the plot along with Bear, all but two of them soldiers. Marcos grudgingly accepted the report and ordered the accused to stand trial before Manila's Sandigan Bayan court, normally a venue used for low-level cases of graft and corruption. Many anti-Marcos Filipinos say the regime controls the court, that a fair trial is impossible. Their evidence? Marcos appointed three new justices to the court just three days ago. This is Tony O'Neill reporting from Manila. Fair will be acquitted. He's still running things as if nothing happened. Who is that? Tourist. Can't be too many cameras. We have to do something. We have to protest. Tony, I still am very fond of you. But all those things that used to fill my head, love and marriage, they don't mean anything anymore. Whew. What are you telling me? You don't want me in your life anymore? I'm sorry. You cannot understand how different it is for me now. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. But I don't want this to end. I won't be able to see you anyway. I'm leaving Manila. Where are you going? I don't know. God, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Tony. But I have to fight. You gotta stop her from going. She's already gone.
You split up with your wife? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't think Sally meant that much to you. I noticed. You know, you're a newspaper man, Ben. You ought to be more observant. Well, some Americans... Don't... I'm not some American. I'm Tony O'Neill. And I'm in love with your niece. And I'll continue to be in love with her for a real long time, okay? Yeah, okay. And when she comes down out of those mountains, I'm gonna take her home with me, okay? Okay. Your goddamn country's like a gangster movie. It's really not that bad, Tony. You must understand. We've had 400 years of Spanish Catholicism and 50 years of Hollywood. O'Neill. <clears throat> yeah. Go ahead. They did what? I can't believe it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Some colonels have started a reform movement. They've broken rank. They've unfurled a banner at the Military Academy graduation parade. They're very brave. They're also very stupid. Yeah, Marcos is going to be pissed. You want to reform the armed forces? I am Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. If the Armed Forces need reforming, then I must be at fault. This movement is a direct attack on me, and I won't tolerate it. Sir, we certainly did not intend our movement to imply any criticism of you. We realize that you have so much to do that you could not possibly have time to attend to all the details. General Ver is fully aware of all the problems the armed forces are facing. He can give them his full attention now because he has been forced to step down while these ridiculous charges are being heard. With respect, sir. And with respect to General Ver, we are losing ground to the communists. An efficient and well-run army should be able to crush them. We can't. What we need, sir, is more effort devoted to stamping out corruption. More effort devoted into motivating the men and improving their behavior in the villages. And we need more money and equipment, sir. I know only too well the difficulties you are fighting under. So does General Bear. I know only too well what it's like to be fighting a powerful enemy under conditions of disadvantage. I led a guerrilla force of 8,000 men against the Japanese during the Second World War. But there must be no hint of dissent in my armed forces. None. Are there any questions? How many members do you have? Don't bullshit me. I want the truth. Hundreds. We are sure that 70% of the officers will be with us. How many have you got now? Hard numbers. 300, but more every day. Washington knows that the army has to be cleaned out. If it isn't, the commies will win. If the defense minister was given the power he's supposed to have, we'll have a real army within two years. Now, there has to go. Put all the political pressure you like, but nothing else. Marcos has to stay. There's no one else. Think what the lift it will give to your enemies if the people start believing it. It seems that I have only a few months to live. I never liked that doctor. Thank you. 
ko yung matagos. Sa tangin ko yung mga anong oras po nangyari? Mga alas hindi po, sir. Sorry, sir. Ah, sige po. Salamat po. The corpses are starting to pile up. Yeah, and there's gonna be more. Well, Marcos is like a dying stag. He's lashing out at everything before he falls. I just don't understand how he gets away with it. He doesn't care what people think anymore. That's what makes him really dangerous. I'm starting to worry myself. Well, you should. Cruises men are outside your windows till four in the morning. You should be careful, too. You haven't made many friends. Is this going live to air? Yes, sir. What time is it there? Sunday, 10 a.m., sir. And as you asked, it's going live to 50 million viewers all over the U.S. 10 seconds, sir. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Mr. President, welcome. Thank you. Mr. President, I'm going to be fairly direct. Uh, be as direct as you like. There is a widespread perception over here that you had Ninoy Aquino killed. That's stupid. Why would I kill Ninoy? He was no threat. He would never have won an election against me. Let's talk about elections for a second, Mr. President. There's a feeling that your presidency is no longer legitimate that as a result of the Aquino assassination, your mandate is gone. Nonsense. My mandate is as strong as ever. Would you be willing to test that mandate by holding an early election? In answer, I announce that I'm willing to hold a snap election, probably in three months or even less. You're serious. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. There have been allegations that you have conducted massive voting fraud in the past, Mr. President. Will you allow observers in to oversee the elections to make certain that they're fair? You are all invited. Wherefore, considering the evidentiary fact as found in the record, the court finds you innocent of the crime charge. Accordingly, they incur neither criminal nor civil liability. The release of the accused who are under the custody of the commanding officer is hereby ordered. General Bear, General Bear, do you have a statement you'd like to make? Well, thank God it's all over. Well, did you have any doubt you'd be acquitted? Never, because there never was any cause. <laughs> General, 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 General Fabian C. Ver was all smiles today when he handed a copy of his acquittal to President Marcos at Malacanang Palace. The President immediately reinstated General Ver to his former status as Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces. Earlier in the day, Ver and his co-defendants were cleared of all charges. Aquino, Mrs. Aquino, has the acquittal of General Ver influenced your position on running any? Yes, I've decided to run. Mr. Kino, is that official? Yes, I've made up my mind. So the grieving housewife is running. Good. She has some support, sir. I want the polls to be conclusive. I want a well-run campaign. And I want a maximum effort from you. I want to win my three million votes. That might be a little optimistic, sir. Make it happen, Johnny. Make it happen.
you feel just a little ashamed of yourself? No, I don't. Those girls have to do it. Yeah, but that's the reality here. Fell in love with the Philippines? I don't think I ever want to leave. My publisher's giving me frantic wind-up signals, but I've managed to convince him it'd be crazy to leave before the election. The election won't change anything. Why? Because Marcos is going to cheat. He doesn't need to. He has years of political experience. He's an old political hack. How can she run the country? She's so, only... Yeah, I know. She's only a housewife. You know, I'm sick to death of hearing that line. Well, it's true. Look, just because she's had to play second fiddle to Ninoy all these years doesn't mean she's an idiot. Politics in this country is the toughest game there is. You've got to be able to cut deals and tough them out. Which, of course, no woman could ever do, let alone a housewife, right? <laughs> My God, it's all coming back to me. What? Oh, you remember all those arguments we had in the bars in Saigon. <laughs> you know, when Tony first introduced you, he said that when you were at college together, you used to be a liberal. God, if it's true, you've been moving to the right at the speed of light ever since. <laughs> How is he? Professionally, firing on all cylinders. Personally, a mess. Yeah, well, don't expect me to shed any tears. And why'd you ask me? For we admit red support. In other words, she's getting help from the communists. Now, as for Marcos, Marcos warns on Red Danger. This is what I want to talk to you about this morning. Who is it? Mike. Come in. How you doing? All right. Corey's blown it. Read this interview she gave the New York Times. Marcos has distributed thousands of copies of it. She's going to call a ceasefire with the communists for six months so they can talk. Mm. What, is she joking? Well, Marcos can cheat on the election. Reagan turns a blind eye. Well, we all know Marcos is corrupt. That's not the goddamn point. Well, what is the goddamn point? We can't let this place fall into the hands of a housewife with a bunch of loopy left-wingers to advise her. You got to stop boosting the woman, Tony. You guys in the press are giving her a free ride. Listen. I'm not giving anyone a free ride. And I'm not giving you guys a free ride either. Yeah? Well, be careful, buddy. Be careful? Be careful? What's that supposed to mean? What are you telling me? Tell the official U.S. line or else? You can push whatever line you like, Tony, but this isn't home. You do too many more pieces like you're a Melba story. Yeah, and of what? This is the Philippines. Guns, goons, gold. It's a dangerous life. <laughs> Corey says she's willing to negotiate. Will the MP8 negotiate if she wins the election? That is up to the leadership. But the elections are irrelevant. The poor and the oppressed will not benefit whoever wins. Well, Corey says she's committed to Lambert. Corey is a Cohoanco, one of the richest families in the Philippines. Can you imagine a Cohoanco giving their land back to the peasants? Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Salamat. Pagbisita mo. What are you doing here? I'm doing a story on the NPA. I hope you show them the truth. What is that? The truth? We help the poor people. 
Nobody else cares about them. But we do. Have you killed anybody? I have to go now. Cory lacks love and beauty. What our people want is a woman. A woman without makeup and manicure. Our nation can There's a joy in living and all my love. that I cannot match Mr. Marcos when it comes to experience. I admit that I have had no experience in cheating, stealing, lying, or assassinating political opponents. Oh my God. Alex is gonna have my ass. Alex. Yeah, Tony. Listen to me. Tomorrow's New York Times is running a story saying that Marcos's war records are a fraud. What? Well, according to Army war records, Marcos never led any guerrilla resistance group anywhere during the Second World War, and he never won a Congressional Medal of Honor. In other words, he's a liar. It's a real break for Corey. How did the New York Times get it? Don't ask. Okay, I just couldn't get it here. But I'll have the first minute of reaction for you, okay? Okay. Uh, listen. Um, the stuff you've been sending lately... No complaints. We're glad you're over there. Alex, what happened? Did you have a heart transplant or something? Why do you say that? No offense, I'm just not used to your praise. Tony, this is Marcos. I'll get back to you. What? Marcos for Ben. Hello. Ben, how are you? Who the hell is this? I'm busy. It's Marcos. Ben, it's the president. Um, Mr. President, how are you? I haven't seen you for a while, Ben. No. Why don't you come and have a little talk? But it's midnight. There's a car waiting outside your office. You must know. Haven't seen you for a long time. How is your paper selling? Fifteen, twenty thousand. I heard it was a lot more than that. Well, I haven't checked for the past few weeks. How would you like to be Consul General in San Francisco? I don't have enough money for that. Money is no problem. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll discuss it with my family. Good. You know... I like to help old friends. Tell me, have you heard anything about an article that's being published by some American paper? Yes, I have, Mr. President. I wouldn't run that story locally. I'm going to sue the hell out of anybody who does. If we get it on the wire service, I'll call you. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate that.
The election tide in the Philippines appears to be running strongly in favor of Cory Aquino. Election crowds chanting her name continue to grow in massive numbers while Marcos crowds dwindle. The fake war medal story is the latest body blow to the Marcos campaign. Many observers here agree a fair election would result in the unthinkable. Cory Aquino toppling Marcos. But a leader of a Filipino watchdog group says there is only a 50-50 chance of a fair election. The Aquino campaign has asked the poll watchers never to let ballot boxes out of their sight. Marcos has called in the army to, in his words, safeguard the election process. In Washington, President Reagan has called for a fair election. Senator Richard Lugar and a team of U.S. observers have arrived here to monitor the election process. But Filipinos are frightened. Villagers know the gunmen and the army will be around long after the observers are gone. And so, as Cory Aquino approaches her last campaign rally, the question appears to be not whether she can win, but whether a fair election process will allow her to win. Ferdinand Marcos is fighting for his political life. His opponent, political neophyte Corazon Aquino, has turned the race into a crusade. But still Marcos holds most of the cards. This is Radio Veritas. We have another request for volunteers to go to the polling place at Guadalupe School on Yabot Street in Makati District. The NAMPREL coordinator there has just called to say a group of rowdies are intimidating the voters and not allowing them into the building. Let's just get this straight. You say you signed up for the electoral roll, but your name isn't on it? That's right. They won't allow me to vote. If you want to be a hero, my friend. Go ahead. It is not for me to thank the Filipino people. It is for all of us to welcome ourselves home. Mabuhay ang Pilipino. Please deliver this to Radio Veritas. It's my victory speech. The results won't be out for days. I've won. The trend is clear and irreversible. The people and I have won, and we know it. <laughs> Nothing can take our victory from is us. Is the woman mad? No power can pry from our hands. The freedom... The election count state. won't be finished for the several days. Spell. It was your job to manage the votes, Fabian. The myth of but I did, ma'am. Then why is she saying she has won? Have you organized the votes or haven't you? They are organized, ma'am. Don't worry. When the counting is finished, the president will be ahead by at least a million votes. Hmm. Only a million? I hereby proclaim Ferdinand E. Marcos as the duly elected president Despite continuing charges of vote count fraud, 
President Marcos had himself declared re-elected today, and he did it in the National Assembly. Meanwhile, President Reagan's troubleshooter, Philip Habib, arrived in Manila to an almost impossible situation. Both sides have polarized further. The United States increasingly viewed here as a country that props up a dictator, one who, after this election, has little support of the population. Does somebody have to get killed to show Mr. Reagan there's something wrong with the election? Opposition newspaper editor Ben Balamo says that President Reagan's suggestion for Marcos and Corey to join the same team shows Washington's lack of understanding of Philippine politics. American foreign policy must look at the Philippines as a basketball game. After the game, no one should be a sore loser. There's only one difference. Over here, they bury the loser. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill in Washington, some of President Reagan's strongest Republican supporters joined the Democrats in condemning the Marcos election. The, uh, the judgment the Senate came to this morning by a vote of 85 to 9 that the election was fraudulent. And it's time that the President of the United States speak on this issue. Cory Aquino has been elected President of the Philippines, and it's time to call a spade a spade. The time for fence-setting is over. We're concerned about the violence there and the uh, possibility of fraud, although uh, it could have been that all of that was occurring on both sides. Fraud on both sides? Now, this is the kind of stuff that makes me proud to be an American. How can you live with yourself, Mike? Like all good Americans living in the Philippines, with my eyes closed. How could your president say such a thing, Mr. Bosworth? Do you think there was cheating on both sides? No, I don't, Mrs. Aquino. You see, our evidence has been that the cheating was overwhelmingly on the government side. Well, have you told Mr. Reagan this? Yes, and so have a lot of other people. According to today's news reports from Washington, little seems to have changed. President Reagan says he's ready to hear all the evidence of election fraud in the Philippines, but hints that strategic interests will be more important in determining the future of U.S.-Filipino relations. Sometimes policy moves slowly, Mrs. Aquino. For a long time, the White House thought of Marcus as a friend, and it naturally takes some of them a little while to come to terms with the new reality. But the murders continue, Mr. Ambassador. I won this election. Even with Marcos's cheating, I won over 60% of the votes. I am the rightful president of the Philippines. And the people will take to the streets before they allow Mr. Marcos to resume his rule. Will you tell your president that? I will. Huh? Whiskey and soda, please. Did you hear our president? He's your president, not mine. If you're going to be the bitch every time I talk to you, I won't even bother. Well, what do you expect? I mean, the last time we tried to talk to one another sanely, we ended in a shouting match. Yeah. Yes, I did see Reagan. It was depressing, wasn't it? Did you get in touch with your lawyer? No, not with all this going on. Sorry, uh, I'm late. That's okay. Uh, Tiger Texan, this is my husband, Tony O'Neill. We've seen each other, bro. Yeah. Who'd you vote for, Tiger? Corey or your commander in chief? I prefer not to talk about it. I was just curious. Wonder how you guys can keep taking orders from an asshole with fake medals on his chest. For as long as Marcos is president, we are obliged to take orders from him. Even though he cheats? Tony, will you lay off? I think these are reasonable questions given the circumstances. Yes, well, you've had your fun. Shall we go? Angie, I'm sorry. I've been called back on duty. 
I call you. Busy boy. When are you going to grow up? to us. You're asking a lot of me, Tiger. You're asking a lot of everyone, including ourselves. What do you want me to do? We have to know how the palace security operates, what we're up against. I can't betray the president. I took an oath. How can you respect a president? who wears fake medals on his chest. <laughs> Four academy class captains. On a moral issue like this, can we all be wrong? You're one of us, Ed. What do you want to know? When is this coup supposed to occur? They wouldn't give me a date, sir. Is it going to be days, weeks, months? I got the impression it was days rather than months, sir. I can try and find out, sir. Find out everything you can. Yes, sir. You couldn't have picked anywhere more private than this? We have to be careful. What's on your mind? We need anti-tanks, about two dozen. For what? What are you guys planning, a goddamn coup? You're gonna get rid of Marcos? Imelda? It's the only way. You know that as well as we do. Tiger, you're talking about a civil war. We're talking about getting ourselves an army that can fight. You want to beat the communists? This is the only way. If there's a civil war, the communists will be the only winners. You did me a big favor once, Ben. If anybody finds out I've showed this to you, I'm dead. With it here, you cannot take it. What are these? Martial law. 10,000 of you are going to be rounded up and dumped on Carballo Island. Marcus warned you not to print the war medal story. You should not have done it, Ben. What are the asterisks? Those with asterisks are supposed to be thrown overboard. Make sure you're out of here by the 27th. Here's air tickets and money. That article you wrote saved my boy from jail. 
I do not forget things like that. Get your family out too. I have a niece up on the hills. If she's captured, please let her live. I cannot do anything in that area. Bishops have agreed on a statement. I hear it's very strong. It's stronger than we had hoped. Will they condemn Marcos? I believe so. When are they announcing it? Tomorrow. I'd like to see Marcos's face when it happens. You should not have come at this late hour, don't, don't you know? <laughs> this is the house of sin. Cardinal, you have made my husband very angry. Really? Why is that? He has just heard of the statement your bishops are making in the morning. Madame, you must stop it. Madame, I am only one bishop out of 104. You are their leader. It was a group decision. I you could stop it if you want to do. The trouble is you just don't want to. 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 Get hold of yourself, madame. You just don't want to. Get hold of yourself. Madame, go home and rest. <laughs> to the Filipino people, we say, now is the time to speak up. A government that assumes or retains power through fraudulent means has no moral basis. If such a government does not of itself freely correct the evil it has inflicted on the people, then it is our serious moral obligation as a people to make it do so. This means active resistance of evil by peaceful means in the manner of Christ. The way indicated to us now is the way of non-violent struggle for justice. The church has showed its real position. They were for Cory all the time. They were the only reason why Cory got any votes at all. Priests and nuns forced them, intimidated them. We have reports all over the country. The church is riddled with communists. They put on a white collar and think they can get away with murder. 
They killed my supporters in the countryside. I have heard dozens of stories. Forget about them. Nobody listens to them. You won the election. You are the president. Concentrate on your inauguration. Hello? Uncle, it's me. Sally? Where are you calling from? From Manila. I left the NPA. Don't come here. Our house is being watched. But, but I have nowhere to go. Well, go over to Tony's place. I, I have to get out myself. I'll meet you there in a couple of hours, okay? Tony? for a boycott. There are seven steps I propose. First, on the first working day after the inauguration of Mr. Marcos as fraudulently elected president, we shall hold a national day of prayer and nonviolent protest. Secondly, I ask you to boycott the seven banks that have helped the usurper perpetrate his hold on power. Yeah. Third, I ask you to mount a massive boycott of the crony media. Yeah. Let us paralyze them. these people want with their pathetic boycott? Do they think Filipinos will go for mob rule just because they stopped drinking Coca-Cola? Do they think I will throw out... How many are definitely with us, Red? Sir, 30% of the unit are committed already. Still only 30. A lot more are ready to come over, sir. Especially after the fake medals. Sir, there's a lot of talk out there. But only 30% are truly committed. Another 40% are just sitting on the fence, waiting to see which way it goes.
Go set for Sunday. Two o'clock in the morning. We still don't have definite proof that Enrique is behind it, Apple. But they're all his men. Of course. He's behind it. He's taking advantage of all the corin nonsense to make his grab for power. By Sunday morning, Johnny Ponce Enrique is finished. Make sure of it. Yes, sir. Everybody's doubting the results of the election. Excuse the me, President. Minister. Telephone call for you. Thank you. Uh, excuse me for a while. Sir, 19 of the guards you assigned to Roberto Ompin have just been arrested. There has posted seven battalions outside the palace. He must know. I'm going home. Meet me there. Salam. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, Fair asked me to a secret meeting at the Bayview Hotel. It's a setup, sir. They were going to kill me. Nothing sure. That explains the buildup at the palace. This is it. How many men have we got? 150. Get all our men out to Aguinaldo. Get as many weapons as you can lay your hands on. Yes, sir. See if you can get Sin and his bishops to support us. Yes, sir. Look, I'll get Eddie Ramos. If he comes with us, maybe you've got a chance. Hello? Just a minute, sir. Thank you. General Ramos. Yeah, Ed. Hey, Johnny. Listen. Some of my men are about to be arrested. We're going to Aguinaldo. Are you with us? Don't say anymore. This phone is not secure. But I am with you all the way. Thank you. He's coming. Nice. Yeah. Tony. I just heard about Silly. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, thanks. I really appreciate the call. I just can't believe it. Well, they killed Aquino on the tarmac. Young kid with a conscience is all a day's work to guys like Cruz. Can you prove it was him? No. No, he's not that stupid. This is still an unconfirmed report. Just hang on a minute, will you? have informed us that Enrile and Ramos are in Aguinaldo and will Did shortly announce that? a break with Marcos. No. Stay tuned in. The defense minister and Ramos have broken with Marcos. They're out at Aguinaldo. Enrile? He was rigging votes for Marcos two weeks ago.
What's happening? There's 300 of us in here. There's about 10 battalions of them out there. They've got tanks and heavy artillery. We have nothing but small arms. They're as good as dead. Well, if you don't stand a chance, then for God's sake, surrender. They'll wipe us out. And then the whole country will be up in flames. So when they come for us, we'll fight. This is Johnny Enrile. I just called to inform you that Ramos and I have broken with Marcos. I just heard. The situation isn't good, so any help from you would be appreciated. There's not much I can do, except pray. Even that would help. Ramos and I are fighting this to the death. Good luck. And really was an annoyed jailer. I had to beg him to let me see my husband. Everything we said or did in that cell was recorded. Now I'm praying for him. The president of 1986 is not the same president who we pledge our loyalty to. He has put his personal interest, his family interest, above the interest of the people. Therefore, Look at I would them. like to appeal to all the... They try to make heroes of themselves. They're traitors! They tried to start a revolution and they failed. I should have stopped and really years ago. And Ramos is your cousin, your cousin! It's a weak man, a totally weak man. He's against me for years. Wipe them out. God, in this dark hour, when the future of our country lies in the balance, please protect and urge us. That we might do your will. Give us all wisdom and courage to guide this country in your name. forward defense or no real possibility of establishing it. So you can take the tanks up to the upper perimeter. They may have snipers hidden and that's all they can do. But a handful of snipers aren't going to stop tanks. Do is the infantry or the marines? Use whoever you can mobilize first. But leave battalions in reserve at the palace and Bonifacio. That's in case they have more support than we think. Whoever you deploy, have this all over by the morning.
Have you heard the news? Yes, I've just been told. Every day has been trying to reach you. Your eminence. I don't want to die. If possible, do something. The order to smash us has already been given. Your eminence. Please help us by calling the people to support us. Okay, Eddie. If I tell my people to go out in the streets and there's blood shed, then I go to God with that blood on my hands. And now, what will you say to God if you do nothing? Marcos will fire into the crowds. Mr. President, the White House is very anxious that this should not turn into a shooting match with the communists cheering on the sidelines. It's hard to negotiate with traitors who plotted your death. We have every justification to crush them. We are very disturbed to hear that, Mr. President. The White House is very anxious to have this settled by negotiation. We haven't got much time. I know. I'm counting on more units for support. What about the telephone calls? What's, what's Excuse me. Uh, sir, uh, you're going to leave us. Olive, you're crucial to us. More crucial than anyone in Manila. Now, there are only a handful of people outside the gates at the moment. And if their orders you to use your men to clear them, the tanks can roll right up to our gates. I have already received the order. Ver called me a few minutes ago. Well, now that you know the score, we're counting on your support. Yes, sir. I think Olive will stall. For how long? We just have to see. In the meantime, I think I'd better move across the road to Camp Krame and check on the defenses there. They could hit Krame first. Yeah. Gringo can handle things here. Minister, we know what you are trying to do. How can I help? People. Give us people. Listen, this man is from Radio Veritas. You can go straight to air. Boots Aquino. This is Boots Aquino. Tell me when you are ready. Okay. This is Boots Aquino. I am here in Minister Enrile's office at Cap Aguinaldo. He and his men are just bracing themselves against an attack. I am calling on all concerned citizens to surround the camp and protect them with our bodies. Minister Enrile and General Ramos have declared that the regime no longer has the support of the people. I am calling fellow countrymen, to surround the camp and try and prevent bloodshed. Go to 
Aguinaldo. Lend your support to Minister Andrile and General Ramos and protect them. And bring them food. They have nothing to eat. As soon as the civilians are clear, get ready to attack the camp. Perhaps, sir, it would be better if we uh, talk to them first so we can assess their position before we attack. As soon as my broadcast is finished, get Enrile on the phone. I want to talk to him myself. This is a Radio Veritas news update. We are receiving reports that... Have Radio Veritas put out there! Yes, sir. <laughs> We'll use a backup transmitter. Just hours ago, this highway was crammed with Filipinos intent on change. Called to the streets by their cardinal, tens of thousands of people fill this stretch of Epifanio de los Santos Avenue. EDSA for short. As the night dragged on, however, the crowds peaked, then dwindled rapidly. The soldiers, led by the defense minister and General Fidel Ramos, want the people here as insurance for their bid to oust Ferdinand Marcos from power. That may be asking too much. The renegades say they expect a loyalist attack. The several hundred people still here now are afraid. Flesh against tanks is no bargain. This is Tony O'Neill from Manila. Man. Do you think it's over? Oh, I think it could get bloody. Are you staying? Yeah. Yeah, I want to see the son of a bitch finished. Let the people of the Philippines be assured that these pathetic appeals for me to step down will not influence me. I have no intention of resigning. I might shortly unleash artillery attacks on the rebel that will finish this problem for good. Sir, there are only a few people left of that, sir. Some were with us to the death three days ago. But now where the hell are they? To faithful everyone, this is Cardinal Sin speaking. I would like to appeal to all our soldiers and our people never to use weapons to hurt any of our countrymen. Dear soldiers, your duty is to protect the rights of our people. General Ver, if you're listening to me, May I request you, for the love of God, to stop your soldiers from exercising any form of violence against our people. Fabian, I thought the president told you to get Veritas off the air. I did, ma'am. I don't understand any of this. When the mountains can be moved, maintain your spirit of love. Pray that we may come to a peaceful solution in our crisis. I will place the men in the uniform, but only those that are for peace. I pray that love and peace may reign in this beautiful island. Saint Michael Archangel, pray for our people. Meldy, there are millions out on Edsa. That's just media nonsense. There are millions. 
Helicopters have been surveying the crowd since this morning. They've just gone out to see the fighting. Like a picnic, like a crowd gathers after an accident. They're wearing yellow. Ferdy, you worry too much. Ever since we met, you worry always. Do you really think the people would want a little housewife to represent our nation? Do you think she would be taken seriously by the leaders of the world like I am? If our position was threatened, there'd be 10 million people out on the streets fighting for us. Our position is threatened. Don't you realize that? Unless we wipe out those rebels before this thing grows anymore, we're finished. These shoes are too low. Wala na kayong tinipad sa lahat ng utos ko. Hindi ko naman. Hindi pa sinagot. I ordered you to move on the rebels. Now move! Wait them out! Like time is running out for the rebel forces inside Aguinaldo and Trump. A large convoy of tanks, armored personnel, vehicles, and troop carriers is moving past our vantage point here on Enza, heading toward Ortigas Avenue. A helicopter just flew over and landed not far from here in the vacant lot at the corner of Ortigas and Enza, where it looks like a staging area has been set up for loyalist troops. I can't estimate how large the attack force is, but this convoy seems to stretch for miles. Many people have started to move over to the vacant lot and are now surrounding the troops. People are singing, girls are giving flowers to the soldiers, nuns are saying rosaries, the the soldiers look confused and don't know what to do. There are rumors all over Manila that a hit squad has been set up to assassinate you. Manila is full of rumors. And some of them are true. There are 70 nuns praying for me here. What better protection could I have than that? It would be safer for me if I stay with you. Sorry, sir. If I hadn't stopped, people would have been killed.
Sir. Tadia cannot get the crowd to move. He's been stopped? Yes, sir. from my country as, as any other way. Hail Mary, full of faith, Lord, of the Disaster will strike you. No violence will come near you. No fighting. No fighting. God will put his angels in charge of you.
Sunday. I think they're with us. They're with us. Radio Bandido again. We have on our phone line, Corey Aquino. Mrs. Aquino? They're ready. People of the Philippines, by now, most of you will have heard the welcome news that the Marcuses have fled. There is no longer any reason for Filipino to fight Filipino. We must have peace and reconciliation. We must be magnanimous in victory. Tomorrow is the day I will be sworn in as President of the Philippines. And our country will return to democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard the voice of Korea Kino over Radio Allow me to take the over Tonight, with me, if I was not totally... You're off the air. Hmm? You're off the air. And we've got Channel 4. Johnny, it's time we shook Marcos up. Greg, tell Colonel Sotelo to take one of his gunships and strafe the palace. Not to kill anybody, just to give them a scare. Dear Ferdinand, attempts to prolong your regime by violence are futile. And a solution to the crisis can only be achieved by a peaceful transition to a new government. Mr. President, we will facilitate your departure in every possible way. The time has come to go. President Reagan urges you to leave gracefully, to avoid plunging this country into a bloody civil war. I understand what the president is saying, Ambassador Bosworth. The first lady is standing here beside me. She understands, but she cannot bear the thought of leaving the palace. Ambassador Bosworth, everything that is dear to me is here. We will, we will make every effort to take as many of your possessions as possible, Mrs. Marcos, but you must start packing now.
I feel it would be a betrayal of Ninoy if I let Ver go. I know how you must feel. But you must balance that against the harm it can do the nation if Marcos fights to the end. I must pray about that. I must ask God for the answer. My God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. Please, and I did this all my sins. Because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. Hello. Could you please get me through to Nancy Reagan? Yes. Mr. President? Paul, did you talk to the President? What did he say? He says you'll be welcome in the United States, if you see fit to come here. Tell me, Paul, what do you think? Should I step down? I think you should cut, and cut cleanly. I think the time Still there, Mr. President? I am so very, very disappointed. Please place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand and repeat after me your oath of office. I, I, Corazon Cojuanco Aquino, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will faithfully fulfill my duties, that I will faithfully fulfill my duties, as President of the Philippines, as President of the Philippines, preserve, defend and execute its just law, preserve, defend, and execute its just law. And consecrate myself to the service of the nation. And consecrate myself to the service of the nation. So help me God. So help me God. No, 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 I'm not bringing that. Bring this instead. Do we have to bring all this? Yes. You don't know how much I'm leaving behind. I told you. We should have gone last week. Oh, stop it. I'm doing my best.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Marcos is gone. Yeah. We just heard him take off, right? Right, right. Here, come on. Come on. Mike! I cannot go! Look! I only have $200 in my wallet! I'm getting under Mike. my very short Mike. Mike. I didn't have time to get my money out of the bank! Everything will be taken care of when you get to Hawaii! They'll be dying! Right. No weapons allowed, sir! Go! Fuck with me! Right! Followed the Third Reich, followed by Aphrodisia's diary. Time to get moving, sir! This is all very stupid. They will pull us back. In a few weeks, they will be begging us to come back. If that's the case, we'll be right back here again, sir. Do they really think this woman can run the country? Do they think so? They'll be begging us to return. Just think of it as a holiday then, madam. Mama? Where are you taking us? Mom, sir, another flight will take you on to Hawaii. No, no. Take me to a local snorting. I want to die in my own country. Sorry, sir, I have my orders. We praise the decision of President Marcus. Reason, reason and compassion have prevailed in ways that best serve the Filipino nation and people. In his long term as president, Ferdinand Marcus showed himself to be a staunch friend of the United States. We are gratified that his departure from office has come peacefully.
President Aquino, congratulations. I and all my staff wish you the very best. And the President of the United States sends his warmest regards. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. And thank you, President.
members of the Congress, it is my great privilege to present to you Her Excellency Corazon C. Aquino, President of the Republic of the Philippines. Speaker, Senator Thurman, distinguished members of Congress. Three years ago, I left America in grief to bury my husband, Ninoy Aquino. I thought I had left it also to lay to rest his restless dream of Philippine freedom. Today, I have returned as the president of a free people.